And yet I've gone from big, you know, medium mm -hmm. class C, cargo van, little cargo van, and minivan. Mm -hmm. Two minivans and I'm in the minivan now. Welcome, Patty. Thank you for being with us here today. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> uh, so I've met Patty here at the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous in Quartzsite. She's about to present on Tuesday, just a couple of days from now, to the entire group on mm. how to choose a rig. And so I pulled Patty in and generously she's going to share with us first uh, oh, just mm -hmm. how to go about choosing the rig that's right for you and some more life wisdom too. So without further ado, Patty, we'd well, love to hear what you have to share. Well, I, you know, I was thinking the other day, like, when did I get started? Because I know my first rig was uh, in the 70s. But when I was in college, I had a little station wagon. Remember those? Yes. <laughs> and I used to go out. I was at the University of Hawaii. And I used to go out on the North Shore and just go sleep in my back of my station wagon and have my little bran muffins and my little fruit. And I just was this little nature child. And I was out there sleeping in my van. I just thought, and I never told anybody because I thought they would think it was like, oh, that's kind of like scary, you know, but mm -hmm. I loved it. Mm -hmm. So that's where I really first started sleeping in a car, I guess you might say. Then when you fast forward to 1975, I was doing uh, beach events and my tax guy said, go rent them once a month. We'll write it off, blah, 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 blah. So that's how I learned how to drive the big rigs. Oh. And then about a year later, he says, well, I think it's time for you to buy one. So that was the class A. You see them out here in the... Uh, we're at High Jolly Campground. There's a big one right there. Why do they want that big one? And yet I've gone from big, you know, medium mm -hmm. class C, cargo van, little cargo van, and minivan. Ooh. Two minivans, and I'm in the minivan now. So you've gone, you've gotten smaller. Right. Go, and some people get bigger, and some people go small, bigger, smaller. Mm -hmm. You've gone bigger to smaller. All the way down. Except for the station wagon. That was a little yeah, bit Yeah, smaller. that's right. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Do you want diesel? Or do you want gas? And here's my recommendation to you. If you want diesel, then put 25,000 miles on it a year. Oh. Diesel engines love to move. They don't like sitting. They don't like being at campsite. They want to move. That's just why all these, you know, city cars and buses are diesel. Oh. Because they want, a diesel engine wants to move. It doesn't like sitting. It collects water and the engine, you know. Oh. 25,000 miles a year and buy a diesel. So whatever a salesman says to you, oh, diesel's the thing, eh, ask that question. Mm -hmm. Am I going to go 25,000 miles a year? That is such a great Yeah. Tip. Well, that's what I learned from diesel school. You know, they ha those engines want to move. You were in diesel school? I went to, When I went to sell motorhomes, they sent me to diesel the engine school, yes. Oh, you sold motorhomes. I sold motor. Yeah, at my retirement at 51. Then I went out and started selling uh well, I started at Beaudry in California. I went to Tucson and sold at Lazy Days. Mike Thompson's in Los Angeles. And Beaudry, I think that's it. Maybe one more. But yeah, I spent about, oh, good 10, seven, seven, eight years, I guess, selling motorhomes. And here's when I'm teaching what rig to buy. Here's what the first question you ask yourself. How do I see myself going down the road? Hmm. Do I see myself having to back up and turn around at a gas station? Do I see myself staying at a campground? Or am I going to stealth? And many of you know that stealth means I'm just going to find a place to sleep at night. You can't stealth in a class A or a class B and sometimes not even a class C, you know, yeah, yeah. class C. But in a minivan or a van, it's going to be easier to stealth if you just want to go out and, you know, adventure out during the day and then just go find a place to sleep. I was recently in Sedona. Ooh. And uh, mm. I'm a nervous driver around mountains and hills, places, yeah. but I love the views, right? They're amazing. And so I was mapping out the route, how to get up to the Grand Canyon on a not scary road. Mm -hmm. And 89A is a very famous, beautiful road if you're going between Sedona and Flagstaff. Mm -hmm. But on the forums, what I saw was the larger RVs warning each other, don't take 89A. It's too curvy. Mm -hmm. the, the grade is 7%. But it's very curvy, windy, and it's steep. And mm -hmm. so they're not able to take one of these most beautiful routes. Mm -mm. So that's something to consider. Is that well. How do you see yourself going down the road? Because that particular route, which I have been on, is really hard on the brakes. If you're uh, trying to break that big house, you know, coming down this, 
yeah. that's not a place you want to go. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, mm -hmm. breaking is really, really hard too. And then it's mm -hmm. same as with the ascent. You've got to have, you got to pull that house up that road. Yes. So you ask yourself that when you're buying, you know, how Mountains. are you going to go down the road? Mountains, driving. And that, I would think, because that's a very important part of traveling, would be one of your first questions. How do you see yourself going down, down the, road? the road? And then ask engine, engine next, floor plan next, mm -hmm. and of course, the most important thing, your budget. Yes. You can buy that bad mama jam out there that's got two axles on the back. That thing's probably four or $500,000. And I've driven them and I've sold them. And I, they are like going down in a jet down the road. There, that suspension just you, you you wouldn't even know that there's this big house on the road incredible it is totally incredible you're going to pay the price if you have that kind of money it's a credible experience i started big with the class a and you know if you're thinking about buying one here's a couple things real quick because i know we don't have a whole lot of time but uh you're gonna have tons of storage you're probably going to have a walk around bed you're gonna have a toilet and a shower and you're going to just feel like a home on wheels you're driving down the road with a home on wheels. That's the good side. The bad side is you're going to have lots of maintenance. You're gonna, mm -hmm. You know, you're going to spend a lot of money on gas. Um, so what do you want? You know, do you want the comfort? You want to walk around bed? You want lots of storage? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to maybe go smaller and just see if that will do it for you too? And that's exactly what I did. I went into a class C. And I think the class C, I had as many as 25 people in there. In the cab over and this, that, and the 25 other. 25 people in Yeah, standing up, sitting, dinette, standing up by the bathroom. And we it was after an event. And we all just packed in there to get a, a, you know, kind of a picture. But What fun. Yeah, oh, it was really fun. So that's what a Class C will get you. Not as much storage, but it'll get you to be able to maneuver around town a little bit easier. You'll see a lot of the Class Cs out here. And I think that's what people are thinking about. Mm -hmm. So from there, I went to uh, wanting to go across the United States. And I didn't know it was called stealth at the time, mm. but I wanted to just kind of, you know, slither in and out of towns. 2013 is when I left with the Nissan van, the big one, the NB1500, which Nissan had just come out with. Yeah. So that was the first Nissan and you were the first van lifer that Nissan knew about anyway. Mm -hmm. That's right. And this is very cool. Um, you really surprised me with this story. Could you tell the folks the a little one bit where, about where the, the president was there that day? Yeah, yeah. The the uh, president was at the Colorado Springs Nissan the day, and he goes, "The president oh, of Nissan, right?" He, well, he was a bigwig. You know, yeah. he's he was out of Irvine, California. He goes, "Okay, you're like a grandma. Why are you buying a van? Because these are all people like your plumbers and stuff buying this van. That's what they built it for." Yeah. I go, "Well, I'm going to put a bed and a desk, kind of like what you've done here. Mm -hmm. A bed and a desk, and I went across the United States working." Oh, so they were so excited about your using the Nissan to live in, which was novel for them. And they wanted you to go around the country, right? And show that to people, that use of the Nissan right. van in order to increase the market. And then during the hurricane, they gave you shelter. Uh, I went across the United States. Well, when I was in New York City, here comes Hurricane Irene. And thank God I knew a higher up at Nissan because they housed my my beautiful brand new van for a couple of days while Hurricane Irene came in. You're going to tell us more about choosing the yes. right, but first, um, what is the, your YouTube channel that you're starting? Oh, well, it's called Van Life While You Can, because I, that was my mantra. Like, I got to get out there and do this. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm working on the road, I got to get out there and do it while I can. Mm -hmm. So I just started a YouTube channel. I'd love for you to subscribe. And also it's on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I have a group called uh, Van Life While You Can on Facebook mm -hmm. and Instagram and all this. But anyway... Um, so from that big one, I went and thought, well, that's a lot of gas. I'll get a small one. So I got the ne Nissan 200, oh. which you see around a lot. It's a cargo van and it's really a minivan, but mm -hmm. it doesn't have anything on it. So I had a bed and, uh, at that time I didn't need a desk cause it didn't fit, but that was totaled in a hailstorm oh. in Colorado. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Total van. And so then I thought, okay, well, what am I going to do next? So I've done class A, two class C's large cargo van, mini cargo van. I thought, well, minivans have insulation unlike the cargo one. Mm -hmm. So, and then that would be something you might want to think about if you're thinking between cargo, like the Ford Transit or a minivan, same interior, mm -hmm. but you got the stow and go seats. Yeah. You got the insulation. Mine actually has a DVD player. Uh, that's a big difference. So your square footage in a class A, uh, how much square footage, if we compare that to Probably what you Probably about 200. 
200 to 30 or maybe wow. 20. So 200 square feet to, to 30 square feet. Well, so the minivan is what, about eight feet long by about four feet wide. So 32 square feet, mm -hmm. my goodness. And mm -hmm. it's about four feet tall. Mm -hmm. And then when I wanted to have maybe more of a toilet situation, well, you know what happened there, then that mm -hmm. kind of came about and that works for me. Yeah, yeah. That was a challenge for you in it that was. small space to find the right toilet setup. That's right. It's easier in a larger space to mm -hmm. experiment with different toilets and find the one that works for you. But in a minivan, you're more restricted by by size as far as how much you can experiment. That's right. And, um, you know, everything from, is there enough room to squat? You know, even, or is there enough big room time. for a big toilet? I mean, and big you time. would think that, oh, it's a small van, I could just squat more easily, but actually you may have a harder time squatting in a smaller space. So it, absolutely. Like if you're if you're thinking about converting a, a cargo van or a minivan into a living space, to to walk around in it and mm -hmm. pretend you're living in it. Right. Try it out. Squat. Lay down. Measure. Feel, measure. Yeah. That's what I did. And when I first bought the car, I'd go, oh, I'll put a little bistro table in my desk and a bed. I get it out and I go to load up and go, oh, there's no room for no bistro table. <laughs> I didn't even measure it. I just in my mind thought how I wanted it. Right. And uh, the thing that, I, and I don't know how old you are and what your intentions are as far as traveling, but for me, I'm 77 soon. And I, I, I was worried about, you know, having that, tr that small space to squat in, mm -hmm. the bucket. I was having, you know, you know, so I needed to really address that situation. And I just actually got a commode mm -hmm. is with what the, I have. With the handles on the with side. With the handles so I can lift up or maybe even hold on. I mean, we don't talk about it that much, but boy, is it important. It really is. You know, yeah. the sleep part, uh, my mattress is the same mattress I have at home. So when I go to bed, I feel just like I'm at home. Mm -hmm. You know, but sleep is another one of those things that, that will help, big thing. help you to drive better, make better decisions, feel better, have better health. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Sleep is part of the equation. And uh, the other night I stayed at campsite until 11. We just, that, that, that couldn't stop talking. <laughs> the next day I went, oh, this wasn't going to bed at nine o'clock like I'm used to, you know. <laughs> so yeah, sleep, I, I appreciate that. Sleep is important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You make your minivan work as far as having enough space to live with, live from, is you're not living in the van. Mm -hmm. You just created an outdoor living area. Right. So that's the whole thing. I just go in that van usually just to sleep. So if I'm out, you know, adventuring somewhere, love to go to the beach. I love beaches. I love Oregon. I spent the winter in Florida. I'm outside. So the van is just my bed. Mm -hmm. So think about that when you're buying something. Mm -hmm. How do you see yourself going down the road? So that's what you got to ask yourself. You know, is that, you know, insurance is different on a minivan. You've got car insurance. Right, right. Um, you've got maintenance, mm -hmm. you know, tires. It is a lot less expensive. For me, it was because I'd experienced all of them, and I'm such a big advocate of stealth that that's what I wanted. Have you thought about doing a high top on it? Well, that's a good question, and that's a great thing for people to think about because we do know a person that did that. She spent $5,000 for that, but for me... I would rather take the 5,000 and if you're thinking about doing that and maybe even put that on, if that's all you want is a high top, mm -hmm. put that as a down payment, maybe on a class B, mm. which is a stand up, you know, you, Interesting. or buy a Ford caravan, no, not a, a Ford econo van where you can stand up and, you know, move around a little bit mm -hmm. better, longer, you got a bed and all that. Mm -hmm. Now we've been, uh, here at uh, WTRTR, which is the women's group for a week and they have a free pile. And I noticed that I know about minimalism because, you know, I embraced it. But boy, when you start packing, you think, well, I'm going to need my Colorado coat and I'm going to need my shoes. And I need, 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 need. Boy, you get out here, a lot of that stuff ended up in the free <laughs> pile. And I hated to give away this Afghan. I hated oh. to give away this uh, uh, palm tree pillow that I had. It was just taking up so much space. So that might be once you get the rig, now you have to decide what am I going to put in it. Mm -hmm. And you think you need all this stuff, but you really don't. You really don't. You, yeah. really don't, you yeah. know, and so that's really fun to watch how we're purging out here this, this uh, winter as we're getting relieving ourselves of yeah. stuff that we didn't need. Well, I like that word relieving ourselves of stuff oh, okay. we don't need. The relief of it. Yes. Lightening our loads. And, you know, mm -hmm. when we talk about the size of, of, of RV or vehicle to choose to live in, and starting really big, like in a class A, um, for some folks, 
they're not ready to give up a lot of stuff. And that would feel um, scary or stressful. And so it wouldn't feel like a relief. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people do start big and gradually are gentle with themselves and gradually pare down. Mm -hmm. And others are just ready to purge. So mm -hmm. whatever is right, you know, yeah. whatever's right. Now, coming back okay. to, um, so for deciding what cargo van is right for you, uh, you talked about the Class A having room often to walk around the bed, having more storage, and the Class B is a bit more maneuverable. Mm -hmm. um, the Class C is more maneuverable, more, more too. maneuverable too. Mm -hmm. uh, and then going to a, a, a cargo van, is, you know, it's basically a Class B, right? Right. Uh -huh. And then, but without all the plumbing and infrastructure. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so it's a bit simpler to maintain. Mm -hmm. And then going down to a minivan is the most maneuverable, most stealth, and uh, uh, and, and already insulated. Insurance, cost of maintenance. Okay. You got to factor those in too. So I will ask you if you are in the market, you know, or if you're thinking in the future, sit down with someone that's not going to sell you a motorhome, mm -hmm. but guide you. Yeah. Because the people that would come in that I handled, I would tell them, I want you to go out of here in the right motorhome. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of people in their minds, uh, uh, they would say, I really thought I wanted this, but God, thank you. This is what I need. Mm, how do you find the right sales agent when someone walks in, whether it's a used car lot, let's say, or an RV lot, uh, or a new lot, how does someone find an agent they, they can trust? Yeah, that's, that's hard because, you know, we have to sell motorhomes and we have to, you know, that's part of our job, but isn't it interesting that my method that the management's always wanted me to teach the other guys, uh, I was one of 65 men, you know, oh. so, I mean, and, and being number one in all those men, oh, there's goodness. something to say about, yeah. you know, how are you selling? That whole experience took me on to my last career, which was I had a, a course in consultancy and sales training mm -hmm. and how to become number one. Mm. And all you have to do is number one, listen to, you know, just sit down with the agent or the rep and say, could you just listen to what I want and then guide me? So in a way you're guiding the sales agent in how to you, guide you. That's right. Mm -hmm. And, and here's some of the factors I want. I think I want, mm -hmm. you might've done so many people on uh, YouTube now will research what they think they want. Yeah. And then they could put their hands on it or touch it out on a, a, a lot and go, Oh, I thought I wanted that and be sure and drive it. Mm -hmm. You know, I would actually, people go, oh, I don't want to drive it. I love it. I'm, let's go buy it. No, 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 no. You got to drive it. Mm -hmm. One guy was a, uh, was a Chevy guy. And it turns out Ford chassis at the time. And you'll see a lot of these class C's out here on Ford chassis. I see you're on a Ford chassis, right? Yes. Ford okay. Transit. Okay. So you're on a Ford chassis. Ford has this chassis that when they build this on top, it's solid mm. and you drive and go, Oh, that feels solid. Yeah. A Chevy has air suspension in the front and it goes down the road a little bit more f floatier. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're in a rig, you want that solid. Mm -hmm. So I would convert Chevy guys oh. that would come in. I said, all I'm asking you is you got to take a, 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 and you do that too, as a, if you want to check your uh, suspensions, drive a Ford and drive a Chevy and you are going to, clearly see the difference. That is a really good tip to get your hands dirty, get mm -hmm. in there, pedal to the metal mm -hmm. and ride it. And, and instead of staying in theory mode by right. just watching videos. Yeah. 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 yeah you got to take a demo. I, I would, people go, no, I just want to buy it. I go, please let me just, let's, yeah. let's go out and just pretend we're going camping. Now, once you get out on the road, it's really amazing. You don't want to come back. <laughs> that's what happened to me with the Ford Transit. Did it? Yeah. yeah, yeah you don't want to come back. Yeah. There's a whole oh, series. This is fun. <laughs> there's a whole series of test drives yeah. on the Blue Wonder Lady channel where oh, is everybody a... gets to see me having the conversion experience. Oh, yes. awesome. 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 See, <laughs> so that's I really, good. And I really value that in a sales agent who Absolutely. will let you try, won't just keep you steering you in one direction, but we'll let you try different things. That's I mean, right. not let you, but encourage you to try different things. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were, at, we're at the RTR and you will see if ever you come to the RTR or really any kind of big meetup, uh, for van people who live in their vehicles, mm -hmm. most likely you're going to see a variety of sizes and shapes and configurations. Yeah. And, uh, I know that I went through a phase of wanting to live, except for in the class A's, uh -huh. <laughs> wanting to live in 
absolutely every single one of them and yes. having such a hard time choosing. So I really appreciate yeah, oh, your welcome, taking yeah. some time to yeah. talk us through the process and some of the some of the experiences that you've had yeah. that have helped you to to make to pivot, right? right. To pivot. Well, you know, like you like at the RV, like I said, at the parking lot of the RTR when they had the open house on Friday. And to see all those white vans that day, it's just like, oh, this is so cool that people have embraced this. Yes. I wish I was younger so I could embrace it more okay. because, you know, that's why I call it van life while you can because I got to go while I can. Mm -hmm. You know, I can drive yeah. now. I can mm -hmm. do all this stuff. But Well, I hope that you all visit Patty on van life while you can. Uh, I know I will be. And thank you. Thank you're you welcome. so much for being here with us oh, today. Oh, you're welcome. It's been a joy. It really has. You all remember, you can do it too, and enjoy your journey. You've done a lot more than live in a van. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, you've been the first on the scene for pretty cool things. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, surfertoday.com, mm -hmm. right? They, surfertoday.com. Mm -hmm. They did a an interview of you, an overview of it your was life? A, well, it was an article called The Outstanding Life of Patty Serrano. And I will tell you, you know, that article meant so much to me because they took everything over my career. And it's not a short article because my career wasn't short, but they really listed everything I want. You know, who does that? Hmm. It's almost like a legacy. Like, here was my legacy in my career. Yeah. Actually, the boogie board, if those of you know what that is, I was in very involved in the early days of getting the boogie board out to the market and, and in sales and the promotion part. If you really want to read about something where a little gal that was kind of plucked out from Tom Morey, I was on my way to law school and he says, no, you're not a lawyer. You got to go come come to the surf company. And it charts about my career. Mm. It was really exciting life. And you know, I am so blessed to have the life I have. I mean, look at it. Even today, I'm out here enjoying this. It's like, I don't have any complaints at all. So if you want to look at that, it's, it's a little extra, you know. That would be, I think that would be a real treat. Okay. Yeah, that would. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs>